All right, Samuels, this way. All the brass come see me off, huh? This must give you a lot of pleasure. You're wrong, Dan. I hope we'll be back soon. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Colonel. Sure, Colonel, I reckon three years in prison will go pretty fast. I tell you what, I come back, we'll just forget the whole thing. But bygones be bygones, huh? Let's go, Sergeant. Wait. Take those off him. But, Colonel, this man's been trusted with the lives of a whole regiment. Now take them off. Yes, sir. What's all this? There's still a little time yet. And there's someone out there waiting to see you. Go ahead. You two men stay with him, but hang back far enough to give him a little privacy. I don't like it, Colonel. You're taking an awful chance. I know, Sergeant. General Terry doesn't like it either. I suppose it's the least we can do. After all, he has served the Army well. And it is his wife, sir. And she is pregnant. he had been the youngest general in the Civil War. Within five years, he had been reduced in rank and sent west to be forgotten. But he was not the kind of man to let the world forget. His name, George Armstrong Custer. Take him back to the barracks. You'll be all right, sir. But the other one, I... Oh, I should have had that horse checked for weapons. Don't blame yourself, Sergeant. It wasn't your fault, any of it. But you think that the man, after all the years he's been around the Army, he'd... Act like one of us? He's more Indian than anything else. Well, maybe we act the same way, given the same circumstances. Who's to say? I 
couldn't get a thing out of her. No, nothing that'll do any good. She'd rather die first. Let's see what I can do. Red Moon woman. You said you were his friend. That's right, I was. I'm your friend, too. But you sent him to prison. Not I, it was the army for what he did. Feed starving people, my people. I know it's hard to understand, but the food he gave you people was not his to give. It belonged to the army. Not me, my people need. <laughs> you may be right, maybe I even agree with you. But what he's done now has made his trouble much worse. And there's nothing I can do for him. He's gonna have to go to prison for a long time. No, for you will not find him. Find him, sir. No, I suppose not. He's the kind that could infiltrate a double picket line and be standing right beside you before he even knew he was there. Yep, he was a good scout, but he sure fixed his wagon. Ain't gonna let him off with no three years this time. Yeah, it's a tragedy of it. The review board would have been a certainty. Simons wouldn't have had to serve all six months at the most. Six months to a man like Dan. Being cooped up seemed like a lifetime. Cooped up for something the army should have done itself. He just couldn't wait. Couldn't play it like a civilized man. Where do you think he'll go? South eventually, Cheyenne country. His wife's people. Well, he could hold the woman and maybe he'd come back after her. Uh, technically, there's no reason why we can't hold her. After all, she did get the horse ready for him. It won't work, sir. We can't put a pregnant woman in prison. All right. Turn her loose. Maybe she'll lead us to him. Yeah, but who knows where? And when? Probably some Cheyenne Lodge a long way from here and a long time from now. But we have very little choice, sir. We can't hold her forever. Samuels has got to show his face someplace, sometime. And the army will pick him up. We can't just leave him to the provost marshal. It might take years and they'd never find him. Maybe. Maybe not. He killed one of my men. I'm responsible for that because I sent him out there. And I'm going to see that Samuels answers for it. That's why I'm going after him. Well, you just said a patrol could never find him. No, sir, not a patrol. And not waiting to track the woman. Just one man against him, thinking as he does. No, no, I can't allow it. The risk would be too great. Sir, I'm responsible for the death of one of my men. I can't ignore that. Ah, oh, Custer, I'm sorry for what was said before, but it was completely unforeseen that that Sir, boy was... I request an indefinite leave of absence to conduct some personal business. Well, I suppose if I don't let you go, you'll go anyway. All right. For one week. One week only. Otherwise, you'll stay out there forever looking for him. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, thanks for not saying I told you so. Wait! a man to get you a horse and some food. My advice to you is to head south to your people. You can't help your man, so you might as well forget him. He won't come there. You'll never see him again.
Springs? Ain't far. Why'd you want to know? A friend of mine would told me about it. Sure, it was, uh, prettiest camping ground he ever saw. And the only water for miles. I think he told me it was southwest of here. I told you wrong. Do not. You figuring on going that way? Yeah, I don't know. If it's north, it might be out of my way. Who is this friend that told you? A fellow by the name of Dan Samuels. Do you know him? Everybody knows Dan. Come here often. Been in lately? Depends on what you mean by lately. You say your friend of his? That's right. Dan and I have been friends for a long time. Are you? Mister, I'm a friend of any man, red or white, as long as you come here to trade. Just as long as you don't come here to rob me or shoot me. Well, I bet there are a lot of people around like that. And they ain't all red. I hear there's a Sioux war party in this area. Could be. Doesn't seem to bother you. Well, why should it? They don't bother me and I don't bother them. They need me and I need them. And they ain't enough like you stopping here to keep my business going. Army, ain't you? Now, how'd you know that? Ain't hard. You're a horse for one thing. And you ain't no scout like Dan. Well, not quite. But Dan and I rode quite a few trails together. And why'd you ask me all them questions? Thanks for your information. What kind of information? Dan Samuels was here, and he warned you to tell me that Lance Springs was due north. Thank you. Hey, California, let's parley! 
You'll never convince me your eyes are that bad, Dan. Now don't tell me that's you, Colonel. Now, Dan, you hurt my feelings. You don't even recognize your friends. I'd have swore that was California. I should have known nobody would be able to find me out here except you. Say, Colonel, I sure I'm sorry about them shots. If I know that was you, I'll just bet you are. Oh, come on now, Colonel. You can't believe I'd have done nothing like that on purpose. I mean, I know I got nothing to fear from my old friend, the Colonel. After all we've been through together, we're old friends. Hey, nothing happened to change that, is it? Say, Colonel. Colonel. Colonel, why don't you come on out? Let's talk this thing over. Nothing to talk over, Dan. I came to take you back. Take you back. Stand trial for murder. For murder. Oh, not Colonel. I can't believe that. Not you. I mean, you know how it is with a man like me. I can't stand being cooped up in no jail. And as for killing that fella, you know there weren't no malice in that. That was just him or me. You know that. I didn't come here to argue the case, Dan. Just to take you back. Now, why don't you throw down your gun and come out peacefully? Now, you know I can't do that, Colonel. That just ain't in me. Where does that leave us? Right where we were, I guess. Yeah, I reckon so. <laughs> I don't understand the kind of a man that turned on his friend with this trouble. The trouble you made for me, Dan. I trusted you. And you betrayed that trust and killed one of my men. He didn't mean nothing to you. That man was under my orders. He died because of me. Now, you understand that I had to do that. Yeah, that's right. Just like you had to lead me into that trap and try to kill me. <laughs> I told you I thought it was California. I sure never thought you'd come riding out after me. Dan, Dan, when I was in that wash, you knew it was me. You've got eyes like an eagle. Colonel, when I seen it was you, all I wanted to do was scare you off. You think I couldn't have killed you if I'd really had a mind to, huh? Just now, you would have killed me. But only if I'd have had to, Colonel. That makes it right. Is it right for a man to hold his friend back to jail to rot? Or to hang, maybe? I don't expect you to understand it. You live by the code of friendship. And I live by the code of law and justice. Justice? <laughs> That's right, justice. You'd have had it. You just hadn't killed that man. Yes, yeah, so you say. We were working on your appeal. We could have gotten your sentence reduced. 
Down to about six months. That's all through now. You fix that, and it's out of my hands. No, it ain't. Not yet. Not here now, it ain't. Colonel, it ain't nobody's hands but yours. You could let me go, and nobody'd ever know anything about it. That's right. And I guarantee you one thing, I'll never get caught again. I believe you. But you ain't gonna do it, are you? Nope. I'm gonna take you back. Well, now, Colonel, that's just allowed to take a little doing. Look up on that hill back yonder. Then. Ha ha. Ha. Oh, Sue, that's a war party. I must have heard them shots and come a sniffing. <laughs> I bet they're just itching to lift a little white eye hair. When they dance so that they end up with a scalp of old yellow hair? Just forget one thing, Dan. Out here without the protection of your wife, you're just another white eye yourself. And they'd be just as happy to lift your scalp. You didn't tell me nothing, Crow. The whole thing is, if you're gonna take me back and hang me, you're gonna have to save my skin from them. That's just what I intend to do. Let's go.
Yes. What about them? Soon. It's sure gonna be something. <laughs> it's sure gonna be something. Yellow hair. We don't have to worry about him. Maybe you ought to, Dan. Don't turn around. Don't force me to spill your blood. You got that gun? I have. It's a shame it ain't loaded. Don't try it. You just take your gun and you just throw it across that fire. Nice and easy. No quick moves, Dan. That's it. Now the knife. Same way. Slow. You shouldn't count a man out, Dan, until you see him buried. I sure have to remember that, Colonel. How'd you... How'd you track me in the dark? I didn't. I remembered how you always talked about Lance Spring, and how you, you and Red Moon Woman used to come here and camp often. It's the only water for miles, you said. So when you got close enough, I figured you planned to meet her here. Why didn't you just come directly here? Why'd you bother to track me at all? I figured if I didn't follow you, you'd get suspicious. Just bypass the place. You knew it was a trap and you just took a chance anyway, right? I figured I could take you. If it hadn't been for those two Braves, we'd be on our way right now to Fort Hayes. Yeah, well, them Braves are still out there looking for us someplace. I know. But we'll be heading for Fort Hayes in a few hours. We will, huh? Back to the hangman's news, huh? Or worse yet, spend the rest of my life in jail. Colonel, I lived all my days free. You should have thought of that before you pulled that trigger. Well, if I'd thought about it, I wouldn't be here talking about it. I mean, I'd be dead, too. And I don't die easy, Colonel. I mean, you know that, all the battles we've been through together. Now, there was a time when that meant something to you. Still does, Dan. I haven't forgotten. Well, it sure seems to me like you forgot it. I mean, I, I'd say you owe me something, Colonel. We don't owe each other anything anymore, Dan. In those days, we were fighting for the same thing. Law, order, civilization. You sure talk half a lootin', Colonel. I'll tell you about your civilization. I got no use for it. That's right. You're still the same. Every man for himself. No responsibility to anyone or anything. Times are changing, Dan. There's just no place for you anymore. You're wrong, Colonel. You're wrong. I belong right here. My woman being the way she is, I got me something to fight for now. You ain't got me back to Fort Hayes yet. You're gonna kill me, Dan? If I have to, I promise you, Colonel. In spite of old times? In spite of everything. Now, if we're gonna get back, you better get started, because it's a lot safer traveling in the dark. All right. Cover that fire. What about her? She don't have to go back. I'm afraid she has to. I can't trust her. Not until I have you secured, but as soon as I do that, I'll let her go, I promise you. I stay with him. I'm afraid that's not possible. He die, I die too. Certainly not that. We don't do things that way. I not understand white man's ways. You are his friend. You let him go. I can't. Not after what he's done. He's made it impossible. You not take him back to die. I told you. You let him go. Red Moon woman, go back with you. Do whatever you want to with her. Your woman, put in prison, kill anything. a Cheyenne woman for you? She's a good woman, Dan. Deserves better than you. I sure ain't gonna argue that with you. 
Look, you can't take his place, and you can't buy his freedom because we don't do things like that. I'm still your friend. I'll do anything else I can to help you. Just come to me and ask. Now, you stay right where I can keep an eye on you. Colonel, stay. Right there. What are you doing? Can't trust on the horse either. We walk. Suit yourself, Colonel. <gasps> Can't be your time. It's too soon. Apparently it is. She sure picked a fine. What do we do? She's going to have to do most of it. We can't make her more comfortable. I'll get something for her. Something bad, not right. Turn. Colonel, I think we got trouble. In more ways than one. Look. They're coming here for water. We don't got time to get away, Colonel. She can't be moved very far anyway. Go. Go, I, I stay. They not follow. You think if we left her, they'd help her? Not enough. Colonel, you better go. But you got to go by yourself, because I ain't leaving her. Neither am I. Colonel, you can still get away. If they catch you here, they'll kill you, and you won't die easy, I tell you. Will you shut up and help me? Settling in for the night. They haven't picked up any of our signs anyway. <gasps> Colonel, ain't there nothing you can do for her? I'm a soldier, not a doctor. I'll try and make her more comfortable. Why'd you stay? Colonel, are you going to try to take me in after this? What do you think? You must want to see me hang off a bear. It's a real torture. Is that why you think I did it, Dan? I don't know. Yeah, that's roan horse, all right. Hey, Colonel, I think... Never mind that. The pain seems to be getting worse. I may need your help soon. What do I do? Why is she crying? Not if I can help it. What's wrong with it? I mean, shy young women usually have babies like it was nothing. Red Moon woman. You said the baby was turned wrong. Maybe I can help you. Colonel, did you ever birth a baby before? 
I wish you hadn't asked me that. Well, horses have them. I've set up with my mare, getting through her time. I don't know, maybe I can help. Get back, give me some room. seen one. <laughs> You're wrong, Dan. Huh? You mean... It's a girl. It is? Yes. It's a girl? I have not given you a son. Well, of course you ain't. I told you how I feel about boys. I got no use for them. Yelling, romping all over the place all the time. I, a man wants a daughter to make his life worth living. <laughs> Besides, you when she gets grown up. Never buck in the territory will be hanging around, making me rich with horses, wanting to marry her. Well, you've done fine. I wanted a girl all along. I just scared to say so. Got much of a chance in a white man's town. He'd call her half breed, treat her like dirt under their feet. But amongst the tribe, she's gonna be something special. Regular like Cheyenne princess, Colonel. She grew up tall, straight, pretty, walking like a breeze across the meadow. I have a voice like dripping honey. You just wait and see. You're forgetting something, Dan. Yeah, I reckon I was. I reckon I was. You poor little thing. What chance you gonna have? Your pa dead, hung for you more enough to recognize him. Grew up wild, no good. Just another half breed scrounging around for enough to eat. It's not gonna be like that. No, it won't, Colonel. No. <laughs> it sure won't be like that. No, it sure won't be like that. We should be pulling out soon, then we can leave. I ain't waiting that long, Colonel. You able to travel, woman? I'm ready. 
You could kill her if you make her walk anywhere. <laughs> well, I'm aiming to try to borrow a pony for her to ride. Besides, you don't know much about Indian women. She's got more strength of body than most white men you'll ever meet. I have to remind you, Dan, that you're still my prisoner. Colonel, you better think about that. Ain't nothing in the world roan horses like better than the scalp of yellow hair. That long yellow hair of yours dangling at the end of his war lance, wouldn't he walk tall, though? Wouldn't he be the biggest Indian in the whole Indian nation? Now you raise a ruckus about me and my woman walking out of here, and he's going to hear you. If you're crazy enough to shoot me. You gotta know you ain't gonna last longer than about a minute more than me anyway. I know you wanna take me back, Colonel. It does look like it's out of your hands finally, don't it? Don't be a fool, Dan. You know that Roan horse is half mad. He doesn't need a reason to kill you. You're a white eyes to him. I'll take my chance. Going back with you, I ain't got any. Make up your mind, you're gonna use that gun or not. Looks like they found some more of our signs. They'll be finding us directly, too. It's better if we go out to meet them. Let's just act like we've been holed up here resting. We'll tell them that you're kin to Black Beaver and we're on our way south to meet him. I think they'll let us go. Come on. After they've gone, I think you can find your way back, can't you? It doesn't end here, Dan. I've got to come after you again. Cheyenne, Ken the Black Beaver. We're heading south. Cheyenne hunting grounds. We're gonna stay with our folks. You come from that way? The north? No, we come from that way, the west. No horse? <laughs> we had a horse. Give it on, it's dead back there some distance. Yours, blue coat horse? Army? No. Wh why? Dead horse, that way. Blue coat horse. Got nothing to do with me. I ain't been that way. Why? Wow, what's wrong? Vanahia. There's something wrong. Because otherwise, me and my wife, we gotta be moving on. We gotta make tracks south before dark. You come from that way? Well, horse, I told you we come from over there, from the west. Easy, 
You tell her that I tried. Here, you, now you tell her that you tell her she was my little princess. Hey. What's all that? <laughs> you ain't gonna have no moment like I'm gone, you hear? That an Indian squirrel for you. I always had a hank when you see the other side of the mountains. Maybe Red Moon woman. Maybe. But the giants will always be remembered. The giants who walked the earth when it was young. In a way, your man was a giant. He went where no other white man went before him, and he made it possible for others to follow. And that is good? That's good. But the bad thing he did. The world changes. Dan couldn't change with it. That was his trouble. He was a good man. I'll miss him. He's my friend. I go. Is there anything I can do? No, there is nothing. The baby? She will grow and be strong. She will be a woman, a Cheyenne woman. 